another episode of Pot Talk with Joe and Paula, um, and we're going to read uh, from the Woodstock Times, August 6th, uh, briefly noted. noted, medical marijuana winners and losers. Paula's going to read this, and then we're going to comment on it. Okay, the State Health Department approved medical marijuana dispensary, approved a medical marijuana dispensary on Route 28 in the town of Ulster and passed on a manufacturing operation on King's Highway in Socrates. The dispensary will be located in an empty storage facility owned by Peckham Industries. See this week's economy column, and I'll read that later. The manufacturing operation was to be built on a shovel-ready parcel next to the Army Reserve Center. The July 30th announcement included five manufacturing operations and 20 dispensaries. Saugerties Town Supervisor Greg Helsmortel said he wasn't surprised the applicant, New York Growing Partners, failed to secure approval from the state because the company was not open to holding a public meeting to address concerns and outline its plans. Ulster Town Supervisor James Quigley also wasn't surprised. The Peckhams are a very influential family in New York, Quigley said. They've been around for three generations and have a lot of clout. He also said the use was ideal for the site and representatives from the company worked closely with the planning board to secure approval. He said the dispensary would probably open in January. Hellsmortel was initially enthusiastic about the prospect of a medical marijuana manufacturing facility that would provide 100 jobs, and frustrated by the company's failure to meet with the public to demonstrate support. Quigley struck a different note. I'm not a user, and I don't have a prescription, he said. I probably won't be there for <coughs> ribbon cutting either. I'm a law and order guy. 
I take no position on the issue. If the, new, if, if the New York State Legislature licenses it and it meets the planning and zone specifications, well, all right. New York State's medical marijuana law passed last year doesn't allow patients to smoke the weed. Instead, they must take it in a pill or in an oil form that is converted into vapor and inhaled. The winning grower applicants were Bloomsfield Industries, Inc., Queens, Columbia Care, NY, LLC, Monroe, Empire State Health Solutions, Fulton, ETAN, LLC, Warren, Pharmacan, LLC, Orange, One Ulster Dispensary. Forty-three applicants were submitted by the June 5th deadline to apply for one of the five organization registrations. Purchase will only be available for those diagnosed with specific diseases, including cancer, HIV, AIDS, Lou Gregg's disease, ALS, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, damage to the nervous tissue of the spinal cord, epilepsy, inflammatory bowel disease, neuropathies, and Huntington's disease. And this was written by Jeremiah Horrigan. And, uh... I'm totally against this and outraged by this. Um, th like they say in here, th th uh, these people have a lot of clout politically, um, and they're they're rich, and uh, they have uh, probably uh, donated big uh, campaign funds to a lot of these politicians. And um, meantime, uh, they get a, these people get a license and they can sell marijuana um, when for uh, the past 50 years uh, the government has been hounding me for growing marijuana um, and uh, 50 years they've made, made me and so many others like me uh, outlaws um, and they fined us and in jail, put, put us in prison confiscated our property um, meantime some po well politically connected people uh, can get a license to sell marijuana. Um, now, how many of our uh, young people have been put in jail for possession of marijuana or sales of marijuana um, because they were not politically connected, um, didn't have a uh, rich, uh, a lot of money? Uh, so what we're saying, what they what the legislature is saying is, if if you are rich and politically connected, you can grow and sell marijuana, but if you're not, uh, you go to jail. Um, this is outrageous. Um, for 50 years, they've been uh, persecuting me and many others just like me. Um, I was arrested in New Jersey with my wife. Um, many years ago. Before me. Uh, yeah, my wife before Paula and the mother of my children and um, they uh, were gonna put me in jail for five years and my wife in jail for five years and they said that they were gonna adopt out my three kids to three separate homes and break up my family. Well uh, I couldn't let that happen. I wasn't gonna let my children be adopted out so I became a fugitive and for 18 years I lived in hiding with my family um, all because of, marijuana, of bogus marijuana laws which were unconstitutional from their inception and, and when, uh, when alcohol was, when the Supreme Court ruled on alcohol and uh, did away with uh, prohibition uh, the Supreme Court ruled that the government did not have the authority to prohibit from the American people. Yet all the drug wars prohibit from the American people uh, the use of marijuana or other drugs. Not that I support people using other drugs, but I don't believe that they should be put in jail. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, I'm outraged that some fat cat with a lot of money and political connections can now sell marijuana and um, and uh, people like me and advocates and uh, um, activists throughout the, the 50 years that we've been fighting 
uh, to, for our rights to use marijuana, me personally for uh, spiritual reasons, I've said in uh, three cases in New Jersey that it was my religious belief that uh, to use, the use of marijuana, that marijuana was a sacrament which helped connect me to my soul and my soul connects me to God and um, three cases in, in New York State for the same thing where I've said that it's, it's my, I use it for religious purposes and yet now this fat cat with political connections um, and now has a license and uh, or your young children or anybody out there who's, who's using or smoking marijuana or growing their own uh, still can go to jail, have their property seized. Um, this is outrageous and I'm 100% against this and uh, Pataki, um, I mean uh, Cuomo, uh, who's not a, 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 a doctor and the legislatures, who's not doctors, has said, okay, you can only have these particular diseases. Um, and uh, they left out in all the diseases that they're doing uh, post-traumatic stress. Many of our veterans coming back, I know many of the Vietnam veterans were using marijuana, myself included, for post-traumatic stress. It's one of the only things that helps with post-traumatic stress. Um, which is not on this list, and uh, so now the legislature is saying, oh, well, we're going to say this disease or this disease or this disease, when the legislature are not doctors. Um, uh, not that I believe that th th this should be in the hands of doctors or pharmaceuticals. Marijuana should be considered an herb. It has been for 5,000 years used as an herb, used for healing, used for spiritual purposes, and uh, there's never once in 5,000 years been a recorded death on an overdose of marijuana. And um, during that 5,000 years, um, there was no laws against, uh, against it. Uh, people could grow their own, um, and farmers were growing it. Uh, hemp was a valuable commodity. It, you know, the original genes that were made from hemp lasted forever. Uh, and during the revolution, it, w it was mandatory if you had so many acres, you had to grow some in hemp to help with the revolution, our sails for our ships, our ropes for our ships, and so many other products, including all the clothes that the early uh, founding fathers wore were called homespun. Homespun was made from hemp. Also, all the medicines up until they, till they made it illegal in our pharmacy, 50% of the medicines when you went to uh, the apothecaries or the herbal stores or even drug stores back in the days, 50% of them had marijuana in it. Then the DEA comes along and says it has no medical use. When the DEA knew that it was a useful medicine and had been in the pharmacopoeia for many, many years and 50% of the medicines had marijuana or some derivative from marijuana in it. Um, so all the laws uh, that they made were based on lies, fraud and deceit right from the inception of the marijuana laws. Um, everyone knows at this point in time that Anslinger lied to Congress, Anslinger um, and a, and a group of wealthy industrialists pushed to make it illegal so that they could keep the farmers from making a profit and keep all the money in the hands of big business. Um, like Rockefeller said, uh, competition is a sin. So uh, they made marijuana illegal not because they, they use scare tactics saying, oh, black people are going to want to sleep with white women and Mexicans are going to get violent. That was all scare tactics, um, distortions, just to uh, make it illegal and to scare the American public. And they used the word marijuana, which is what it was called in uh, Mexico, which uh, had they used the word hemp or cannabis, most of the kind, most of the farmers who were growing hemp and cannabis would have been outraged and would have stood against it. But yeah. most people did not know that marijuana was hemp. They they 
they fooled the American people, lied to the American people, they lied to Congress to pass these laws. Um, you want to read the second and half just of like, Including doctors. Doctors didn't know that cannabis was marijuana. Right. The doctors understood that cannabis <coughs> was part of the pharmacopoeia. We're your local high-speed internet and cable provider. Are you looking for a fast, reliable internet connection? A large selection of your favorite HDTV channels? With 24-7 access to the best customer support technicians? All at a fair price? Fuck you. You'll take what we give you. You'll have the option of choosing from several of our completely unwarranted rip-offs, including internet speeds up to 200 times slower than Korea, at twice the price, TV packages with over 500 channels, 90% of what you can view, and we guarantee a plethora of hidden fees. Then, our barely trained technicians will come to install your services somewhere between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., knock once while you're in the shower, and promptly leave. And once we do finally get your service up and running, it'll be down and limping within three hours. Indefinitely. Why, you ask? Simple. We are part of what is called an oligopoly. It's like a monopoly, only legal. See, in closed-door meetings with four or five of the other major providers, we've secretly agreed not to have differing prices, allowing us to completely eliminate any competition and collectively raise our prices to optimum cockbag levels. Because we here at your local high-speed internet and cable provider don't believe in customer satisfaction. We believe in money. Pools of money. Looking for a better deal? You can all gobble down our balls. You're paying for it. Your local high-speed internet and cable provider. You won't like it, and there's no other option. Okay, this is from the Woodstock Times, August 6, 2015, Economy Section, by Getty Svekauskas. The Peckham Plan. Jasmine Hupp, founder of Women Grow, a professional network for women with marijuana businesses, told New York Magazine she had a simple question for women who wanted to start one in New York State. Do you have a million dollars? The Empire State's new program for manufacturing and dispensing medical marijuana made the costs of entry high. None of the women who called had that much available capital. Then Amy Peckham and her two 20-something daughters, Keeley and, Heller and Hillary, called. Do you have a million dollars, Hupp asks. Yes, said Amy Peckham. Yes, we do. The Peckhams, a wealthy family from Catanaw in Westchester County, own Peckham Industries, a vertically integrated manufacturer and distributor of construction materials with many facilities and subsidiaries in the eastern third of upstate New York. The family has a strong business. There probably aren't many local highway departments in the region who don't deal with Peckham Industries or its subsidiaries. The multi-generational Peckham business has been doing what it's been doing in this region since 1906, expanding its business by buying competitors and expanding its business line. Amy served on her late husband's board. Amy Peckham said her family owns nearly 7,000 acres of land in the state. Amy Peckham's mother, who suffered from ALS, didn't have access to the relief medicinal marijuana might have brought. Even so, when Amy had told her daughters of her thoughts for the new family business, their first reaction, as reported in the Mount Vernon Daily Voice, was, You want to do what? <laughs> this was not the sort of diversification that the family's main business would have suggested. But Hillary, who had studied biology and music therapy at Hamilton College and worked at Peckham Industries, and Keeley, who had studied horticulture and botany at Tulane, warmed to the idea. Hillary is now chief operating officer of Etain LLC, set up to pursue the new business line. Keeley, who, told her, who had told her mother she wouldn't come back without a greenhouse from New Orleans, is chief horticulture officer. Amy was reported to have been thrilled to be working with her daughters. I wouldn't have dreamt of this, she told Jean uh, Macknick, Muchnick of the local paper. Last Friday, the State Department of Health reported that Etain LLC was one of the five organizations receiving permission to grow and sell medical marijuana in the state. 
Each of the five will open a grow facility and four dispensaries throughout the state. We think it's a humongous opportunity, New York Times reporter Jesse McKinley quoted Hillary Peckham as saying. It, Itain will be doing its growing, uh, in parentheses, manufacturing, in a former horse barn at Peckham Industries 17-acre industrial park in Chesterton, Chestertown in Warren County in the Ar Arondacks. It expects to locate its dispensaries on Route 28 in the town of Ulster and in Albany, Yonkers, and Syracuse. Itain LLC has already had discussions with Ulster's Town Planning Board about establishing its Ulster County Dispensary at Peckham's office on the same lot as its liquid asphalt tanks on State Route 28. Official plans have not yet been submitted said Town Supervisor Jim Quigley, who has also talked with Hillary Peckham of Itain. He said he believed the Route 28 asphalt storage facility had been consolidated with a similar underutilized facility the company owns in Athens several years ago. Quigley said the presently unused site still owned by Peckham will require environmental testing to determine whether remediation is necessary. The tanks will be removed. Of course, other site work will also be needed before the facility can be used as a marijuana dispensary. Welcome to the neighborhood. The limited straightway, straightaway on that section of Route 28 houses a wide variety of small commercial uses, including the Hess Station, the Wheaties Furniture Store, Meredith's Bread, the Bryant Enterprises, the Route 28 car wash, and quite a few others. The state DOT will probably prohibit westbound Route 28 traffic from access to the site through a left turn. The New York Magazine article by writer Ben Kerr said the Itain application process alone had cost about $750,000. The other four successful enterprises for a license among the 43 applicants statewide were Bloomfield Industries, Inc., Columbia Care NY LLC, Empire State Health Solutions, and Pharmacan LLC. Some 22 states and the District of Columbia now allow some form of medical marijuana, but Marijuana Policy Project Executive Karen O'Keefe argues that the New York program is particularly slanted towards deep-pocketed players. Don't expect neon lighting on Route 28. State regulations dictate that, that the dispensary can hang only a single black and white external sign. The awarding of the licenses will mark a discreet but definite start to a controversial program in which a lot of New Yorkers are very interested. Okay, I'm against this mar medical marijuana thing completely um, for so many reasons. Um, activists like myself, people who fought and believed in the marijuana for uh, 50 years or more, um, are still going to be at risk for going to jail. Uh, none of us can grow our own. Um, this uh, medical marijuana patient should be allowed to grow their own. Um, but fat cats who have a lot of money and are politically connect, connected got licenses. Yet uh, people who believed in it and fought for the rights of marijuana users uh, are still going to be criminalized. Um, this is outrageous. I'm insulted by it. And so should all you people out there be insulted by it. Um, we now have two classes of people. The rich and powerful who can get licenses and uh, be immune from prosecution and the average person who's, who's going to be a uh, subject to prosecution. Um, the marijuana laws are based on fraud and lies from, it, from their inception. Um, we want repeal of a law that should have never been. Um, you might notice behind me here, hopefully on the screen, um, plants that I grew that the uh, police came and confiscated. They stole my property. 
Um, now, fat cats who are politically connected, who have lots of money, are going to be immune and they can grow and sell it. And uh, if you think that prices, uh, medical marijuana patients are going to have access to this, the prices are going to be even higher than the street prices. Um, we've talked with people up in Canada where uh, medical marijuana is distributed by the, by the government. Um, and, they, and many of them say they, buy their, they still go buy their marijuana on the street because the quality of the marijuana up in Canada, um, we were told by people up there who get medical marijuana from the, from the government, that it has sticks and, uh, and, and seeds in it. Um, and uh, that it's of a very poor quality. Um, I doubt that these people are going to be as as loving as your average marijuana grower. Um, they're go this is going to be a commercial operation and uh, there's nothing here about the quality standards in any of this that they've talked about. Um, and I doubt that these people like what they say there Obvious, these people are new to this and don't know anything about growing, don't know anything about strains. And uh, because this one young girl uh, went to school and has, uh, for what, uh, for... Um, well, one went for music therapy, no, not that studied one, the other biology. One. The other one studied, um, I think, horticulture. All right, horticulture. She studied she's, horticulture she's in school, in but studying horticulture in school is not the same as growing marijuana. Anyone who's grown marijuana for a long time knows that there's uh, certain ways to, to grow really good marijuana. Um, and uh, I'm not so sure that these people are going to grow a, a quality marijuana. So medical patients are not going to be, I don't, in my opinion, are not going to be getting the best quality. Um, and also, why should rich fat cats who, who can afford a license, who have political connections, be able to grow and sell marijuana when so many of our brothers and sisters are sitting in jail for growing or selling marijuana? Um, this is outrageous. We have two classes of people, the rich, powerful, and connected, who can get licenses and are immune, and uh, the average person out there who is going to take the brunt of it. So it's time for you people out there to speak up, and uh, it's time for us to vote Cuomo out of office, because Cuomo... Um, the legislature was considering medical marijuana, and they were going to uh, originally were going to make it so uh, anyone who had a medical marijuana license, or uh, anyone who had a, the right to grow medical uh, a, a medical person could grow their own for their own needs, and that would save them a lot of cost. <coughs> Now what Cuomo did came along and said, no, we're not going to allow medical marijuana patients to grow their own. We're going to make them go to this fat cat and give a whole lot of money to this fat cat. Um, so now we have five monopolies, each got their own little area um, of New York. And uh, this is outrageous. Um, medical uh, marijuana activists like myself who've been fighting for marijuana and for the um, repeal of a law that should have never been are still going to be at risk, are still going to be going to jail, are still going to be having their marijuana confiscated. Um, uh, this is outrageous and I'm 100% against it. Um, do you have any opinions on this? Well, I have a lot of opinions on it. Um, first of all, you notice that they don't talk about growing. So legally, you must have a different department for manufacturing. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, so I'm sure that there's laws on the book, ancient laws, that you don't stop people from being farmers. Because after all, what makes a country really great is its agriculture. It's not its tourism. As long as the food supply is insured, that will be a healthy you know, nation. So, as Joe was saying earlier in the show, at one time, 
for the war efforts, going back to the Revolutionary War, but all the way up to World War II, it was required to grow hemp, right? Right. So, so you didn't want to, to tie up the farmers. So I'm certain if they said it was uh, about growing, then it would be under the, the, the category of farming. And that's why it's important to, to take a wider look at this. This isn't just about marijuana. This is about seeds and plants. And earlier Joe was also talking about the patients. A lot of the medical, a lot of the patients who need marijuana are not rich. And yet you've got an operation that's unfolding that's going to be geared towards the rich. And like Joe said, the good stuff is still going to be grown by those who are going to be persecuted and their property will be stolen. So for those people who like marijuana, those people in the police department that take it, and, uh, and, and sometimes evidence is missing, I, you know, if, if they're connoisseurs of marijuana, they want people that can grow really good marijuana. Now, when it comes to disease, Rick Simpson, who, who did Run From the Cure, the Rick Simpson story, he was the man in Nova Scotia who discovered that marijuana was very helpful for uh, a problem that he had that none of the doctors could help him with. So after he exhausted all of the pharmaceutical uh, remedies, he smoked a joint, and this was a man who normally didn't smoke. And when he found he smoked the joint and that it made him feel that much better, he asked his doctor if he could get a prescription, and the doctor said, no, it's very difficult, and also it's not good for you, not good for your lungs. And he said, well, what if I make it into an essential oil? So they agreed <coughs> that that would be a good way to do it. That's what Rick Simpson did, and then he was uh, very benefited by eating the oil, not vaporizing it but eating it. But Rick has also said that in the case of very bad diseases like cancer, you have to have first-class cannabis. It has to be really good. He said it's the type of cannabis that a pothead would smoke and feel like he's melting into the sofa. He says if you have that melting into the sofa you know, feeling, that's, that's the the plant, the, the bud, the quality that you need then to put into a solvent, to strain it, to boil off the solvent, and then you'll be left with the thick oil. That's the quality you need. You don't give trim or some of the, you know, the little extra parts of the plant that are there after you've sold it, to, you know, for recreational use to people who just, who want to get high and who have the money to pay for the best. That's what you need. You need the best for people who are sick. And, and so that's why it's very important that you have uh, your marijuana grown or your cannabis grown by suppliers who, who are qualified. And that medical marijuana for patients who are really suffering needs to be produced, I feel, by compassionate people, not by people who want to sort of jam it into... Uh, to, where, to some kind of tank storage facility where you're going to need remediation done. Also, well, I don't know if you want to comment on that before I go on to a slightly different angle. Um. This, who grows it? Because she has two, two daughters in their 20s. One who had music and biology and another who studied horticulture and uh, biology. But, you know, they're, 20, they're, in, their, they're in their 20s. Yeah, and these are just rich kids that their parents are setting them up uh, with this business so that they can get richer, you know. And this is about just just about making money. These people are not about worrying about uh, curing people with uh, problems or providing really quality medicine. This is about them making money. And uh, Pataki, I mean uh, Cuomo, and uh, the politicians are catering to these rich cut people uh, because they probably uh, donate to their campaign. So uh, this is outrageous. Um, I'm 100% I'm against uh, licensing medical marijuana. Uh, m medical marijuana people should be able to grow their own, um, not have to be licensed. And even in some states where they, they have better 
medical marijuana li uh, laws than we have here, which New York has the worst medical marijuana uh, laws of any of the states that have medical marijuana law. But even in some of the better ones, um, in order for you to be able to, uh, for medical marijuana patients to be able to grow their own marijuana, they have to get a license, and that license allows the police to come into their home at any time and inspect their plants, um, which is a violation of your right to privacy. Um, and by signing a license to say, okay, I'm, I want to be a medical marijuana patient, so I'm going to get a license. Now, in order to get that license, you have to allow the police to be able to come in your house without a warrant and inspect your, uh, your marijuana plants. Um, this is a violation of our constitutional rights, the right to uh, be in your home without a warrant. I mean, quiet uh, enjoyment. Quiet enjoyment of your home. Uh, and it leaves, it leaves it so that the police can do warrantless searches. Um, I'm against that. I've been against the medical marijuana movement from the very beginning. I'm not against medical marijuana patients getting medicine um, or having access to marijuana, but I'm against all the regulations. Um, no other medicine uh, is regulated this way. Um, if you got um, any of the pharmaceutical medicines, the police don't come into your house. You don't have to have a license if a doctor gives you a prescription for uh, Prozac. For Prozac um, you don't have to have a license to, to do Prozac and you don't have to give your right, oh now the police can come in to see how many Prozac pills you happen to have. Um, the only marijuana has this, have they done this? And marijuana has been proven over 5,000 years, there's never been a death on an overdose of marijuana. You can't say that about any pharmaceutical drug. Um, so it's the safest of all, I don't even consider it a drug, I consider it an herb. Um, it's the safest of all medicines, and yet it's the harshest uh, penalties and the harshest uh, uh, oversight of any of any of the medicines in the in the pharmacopoeia. Um, this is outrageous. It's discrimination, and uh, people like myself who've been fighting for the for the rights to use marijuana for 50 years, and many other activists. I'm not just speaking for myself here. I'm speaking for all the marijuana activists that have been fighting uh, for this for uh, as long as I can remember. Um, this is outrageous, and uh, it's about government completely controlling it. And also, farmers, back in, before it was illegal, farmers were growing it, and it was a good crop, a money crop for them. <coughs> then, <coughs> some, uh, some guy invented what called the decorticator, and uh, that machine would have made the production of marijuana, a booming industry. In fact, what's that magazine? Uh, Popular, Mechanics. Popular Mechanics did an article. 1932. Where, uh, 19, what? 32 or 33. In 1932 or 33, where they said it would be the new billion dollar crop, right? And uh, all our farmers that have now been put out of business would have had a crop that would have been a money crop and uh, we would not have lost so many farms uh, to, to bankruptcies. And for those of you who are concerned about factory farms, when small farmers lose their farms, this is what you get. Right. And uh, also, we have watched over the years, all the drug wars, all the drug laws that they've made, they started with the drug war, and then with the drug law, and then they moved that same law into other areas. Right now, um, they're saying, oh, we're going to license plants, marijuana plants. Um, well, pretty soon they're going to say, well, we're going to license tomato plants, or we're going to license uh, garlic, or we're going to license any other plants. <coughs> and 
pretty soon the, the big corporations who can pay off the politicians are going to pay off the politicians so that um, GMO products are going to be uh, okay and to grow and the big corporations will be allowed to grow them and if you want to grow a home garden like Bob Dylan said in one of his songs I can see the day coming when even your home garden is going to be against the law well we're seeing that coming you know once they start saying oh you can only have six plants of, of marijuana then pretty soon they're going to be saying well you can only have six plants of tomatoes or six plants of peppers or six plants of watermelons you know um, man has been growing herbs and growing his own food uh, going back to uh, hunter gatherers right after hunter gatherers came agriculture and uh, agriculture was not regulated now all of a sudden uh, the big corporations want to control everything so they pay the politicians. I can't believe you people out there just keep voting these people in and voting these people in who are just in the pockets of big corporations. It's time to get big corporations out of government. Um, it's time to get uh, the politicians who don't, don't stand up for the rights of the people who cater to the big corporations uh, out. We've got to vote these people out. Um, do you have anything on that? Well, yeah, like I was saying before, uh, maybe later we'll look up the legal definition of manufacturing. But manufacturing is a different word than growing. So what Joe has described about a farmer's right to, to grow whatever he wants and to be able to sell at whatever price that he wants to whoever he wants means that that farmer is a free man. Also, uh, access to the herbs that purify the blood is promised in the Bible so that you shouldn't be putting a toll on what you know the divine availability of remedy and I think when you look deeply into legal systems the successful legal systems or those civilizations that have endured are civilizations that have endured because they keep the peace in those communities through through law-abiding people and that includes those who are enforcing so you can see that we've had a steady decline in this sort of color of law uh, courts and policemen that are making courtesy calls when they just sort of want to come in and check out what's happening um, I Joe was talking about um, funding people's campaigns and I don't know if you want to take it elsewhere, but I was going to read something from Hugh Reynolds in the July 2nd edition of the Woodstock Times uh, that, that actually sort of foretells when the announcement on the licenses were made on August 6th. Do you want me to go into that, or do you want to take it in a different direction? Um, does it have to do with marijuana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah read this that is, one. This is, this is the July 2nd edition of the Woodstock Times, and, but I want to go back to this. Um, Hugh Reynolds says, Ancient Wisdom. Bill Carey was a New York City cop. He walked a beat in Hell's Kitchen. One evening he was called to a neighborhood bar to deal with an unruly patron. The bar owner said the man had drunk up his pay. Afraid to face his wife and large brood, he had become disorderly and abusive. The owner wanted him arrested. You took the man's money, Officer Carey replied. You can take the man's abuse. Bill Carey, my maternal grandfather, died at 39, five years before I was born. His widow and his children were forever telling stories about the man in the picture they called Daddy. Which brings me to a nice piece of investigative journalism by the Daily Freedman. Uh, perusing campaign spending reports, which are public record and readily available online, the local daily reported that County Executive Mike Hine had received some $12,500 in campaign donations between 2012 and 2014 from different parties seeking to establish medical marijuana um, farms in the county. Socrates has been mentioned in media reports. 
So there appears to be fierce competition for these licenses. The state health department will issue only five statewide. Some 43 applications have been received according to the Friedman Report. And remember, each application had to come with a hefty, non-refundable $10,000 fee. So if you multiply 10000 by 43, that's a lot of money just for the application And it's fees. just the politicians scamming people, you know. To, uh, let me jump in on that. To say, oh, just to, uh, to put in an application, it's $10,000 non-refundable. Well, why is it non-refundable? If you don't get the if the if your application is turned down, your money should be returned. But they get to keep it. It shows the criminality of our politicians, you know, and how they're playing with this issue, how they're using this issue, and it's only about money. Go ahead. Okay, Hein, questioned by the Freedman, insisted that he was not influenced by contributions in any event and that said contributions had nothing to do with county policy. If something was good for the county economy, he would promote it, he said. And so notice that when they're talking in this one about the dispensary, or, or what, <clears throat> in this one, it, you know, about, you know, this is August 6th, okay, I just read you, you took the man's uh, money, now you take the man's abuse. So Michael Hine collected $12,500 in campaign financing from people obviously who are interested in this and, and want to sort of work through the system. You know, they always say, if you don't like the law, work with the legislature or, or elect somebody else. I remember Abigail Storm, who did that really successful show that was very watched called The Hemp Controversy. Uh, she helped Jeremy Wilbur on one of his campaigns, and the platform was to make marijuana legal or to, to bring it, you know, make Woodstock a marijuana friendly place. But instead, we're bringing all the criminality that's involved with this. And you can see here, okay, I read you July 2nd, so here we are the announcement on, on August 6th briefly noted medical marijuana winners and losers. Now look at this. Uh, he said that Saugerties Town Supervisor Greg Helmsmortel said he wasn't surprised the applicant New York Growing Partners failed to secure approval from the state because the company was not open to holding a public meeting to address concerns and outline its plans. Well, let me remind you, there were three public hearings back in 2013 in very beautiful venues, you know, the Kingston City Hall, and the topic was selling Central Hudson to Fortis of Canada. In, in, and, and I recorded that meeting, and, and you can look it up on my youtube.com forward slash Paula Gloria, and you can see that meeting to, to refresh your mind that nobody spoke on behalf of the sale, and yet the sale went through. Now we're working with the Public uh, Service Commission on the Smart Meters Resolution. So he's saying that this New York Growing Partners, who undoubtedly, I haven't investigated, but I would take an, a good guess, that they were uh, helping to finance Michael Hines' campaign. It looks like they're completely shut out in the dark uh, in favor of somebody who can come up with $750,000 just for the application procedure. And you don't actually know what the other people paid. You know the Peckhams paid $750,000 for their application. What did, what did the others pay? It seems as though it's, it's kind of a ratings game. How close do you know the, the politicians and, and how what much, can you get away with? How much are you contributing to their campaigns? You know? um, but, but it doesn't do any good. You, but the real outrage was lost. But the real outrage in this thing is so many of our brothers and sisters are sitting in jail for growing a harmless herb. Um, and uh, now fat cats with political connections, I keep repeating this, fat cats with pr political connections who can donate to the campaigns of these criminal politicians are getting licenses. And uh, the, the people who've been, who believed in it and fought for the use of marijuana, fought for their rights to use marijuana, are still going to be going to jail, are still going to have their property confiscated. If you grow, if you grow some marijuana plants and you don't have a license, 
the police can come in and take your property. Uh, marijuana being marijuana plants. Marijuana plants are your property. Like uh, if you were a corn farmer and you grew corn and all of a sudden the police came and said, uh, no, you don't have a license for that corn, so we're going to confiscate all your corn. You know, um, and uh, or if the police came and said, uh, you don't have a license to sell your corn, therefore we're going to confiscate all your corn. Um, this is outrageous. I'm 100% against it. And you people out there in television and radio land and uh, in New York and in Woodstock should all be outraged, outraged at this. And uh, you should remember, we got an election coming up and it's time to vote these, these clowns out. And it's time to, uh, everyone should be calling up Cuomo and saying, this is bogus. You know, take the time to make some phone calls. Call your local representative. Call uh, your senator. Call your congressman and say you're against this. You think it's outrageous. Why should uh, young kids have their lives destroyed? Do you know when a young kid gets arrested for marijuana and it's on their record, um, if they try to get a loan uh, to go to college, it's going to be denied. And um, so um, this is hurting uh, all the young people uh, who are trying to get, get ahead. They want to get a better job, although I'm against taking loans for, uh, for college and stuff because we've seen that all, most of these kids who have taken loans can't afford to pay them back. And even when they get out of college, they can't get a job in the field that they, they went to college for. So now, after a couple of years, interest builds up on those loans. So uh, we actually have some friends. I have a friend down in New York City, Daniel, who uh, didn't get a job when he got out of, out of school. And uh, interest built up and interest built up. And now they're threatening him. And anytime he makes money, they're ready to take the money from him. Uh, so how does he pay his rent? Um, this is outrageous. <coughs> Can I talk about Daniel? Uh, yeah, you want to talk about okay, Daniel? Okay, Daniel spent $26,000 to a school to learn how to be an editor. And he was a very good video editor on Final Cut Pro 6 or 7. I think so. Final, Final Cut Pro uh, is a good editing program, and uh, that's how I learned when, when they finally taught us at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, because it was very hard to get into these classes. And I believe at that time, they were trying to keep very few editors uh, on the market so that, that editors would get more money. But eventually, it, the market opened up, and Apple was selling products, and so there he was going to the best place he could to learn how to become an editor. And he became a good editor. Today, Final Cut 7 is not even supported. Now, I saw this transition when Final Cut 10, they, they leapt from 6 or 7 all the way to 10 because it was a completely new uh, software program. And, if, and it didn't really do you any good to know Final Cut 7 and, and all of the ones before. It was different. And had I not gone through this experience myself, if some editor came to me with some excuse of why the job wasn't done, I would have thought that, that he was derelict in his responsibilities. But in truth, what happened was they taught a lot of people how to become editors and then stopped supporting the programs, which was essentially pulling the rug out from under these editors because they weren't able and Final Cut 7 wasn't responding plus I believe hacking was going on and through the IP address discrimination and so his $26,000 education to become a great editor was, was worthless. worthless. It was just used as fuel to, to start to rack up all these charges to keep him a slave for the rest of his life as long as he's in that system his pay is garnished and all of that. It's it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. And when I went to college way back in the day at the University of California at Santa Cruz, um, it was state supported. You know, you didn't have to go into huge debt. I think I finally took out some loans and all the debt I had after college was seven thousand dollars. 
This doesn't happen today, and it's and it's really uh, abysmal because you know, with an uneducated population, with an unskilled population, or a population that only gives skill in a highly discriminatory manner, everyone's going to suffer. Like what I'm saying is, when somebody has a serious disease, do you really think that the Peckham's daughters are going to have the expertise and the knowledge to grow the real, the, the, the finest? No. The, the finest has been grown by people who they're locking up. They're putting these people in prison just to protect a, mon a monopoly. And when you protect a monopoly and you don't have competition, healthy competition lets the best product rise to the surface. That's my two cents. Yeah, and uh, right now, um, young, young kids are having their lives ruined by uh, laws that rich and powerful people, people with money and political connections, don't have to face. Um, I think if they're going to lock up young kids for growing marijuana, then all these people who got licenses should get locked up. If, it should be uh, same law for all, not one law for the rich and powerful and politically connect, connected, and another law for the peons, for the working class, for the poor people. You know, our prisons are full of marijuana people. You know, I, I've been doing show after show after show telling you people out there in television land, call your representative, call them and say, we want all marijuana prisoners freed. We don't want any more going in. Going in. We want all penalties for marijuana removed. You know, we want repeal of a law that should have never been. The law is unconstitutional. The law was based on fraud and lies. Um, and it was backed by rich, by the pharmaceutical companies, by uh, the paper companies, by um, uh, what's the other one? Anyway, big powerful corporations were the ones behind making marijuana illegal. It had nothing to do, and I'm going to repeat this, it had nothing to do with black men smoking marijuana and sleep with white women. It had nothing to do with Mexicans smoking marijuana and becoming violent and out of control. That was all lies and propaganda. Everything that the government tells you these days is lies and propaganda. You know, and I, I hate to say government because it's not a gut. We don't have a government anymore. The constitutional government that they told you we had in school and that most of you people out there, brainwashed people out there, believe what they hear on Fox News and on CNN, that you believe that we have a, a government like the Founding Fathers set up. We don't. We have a, a corporate takeover of our government. Um, and, uh, and we're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye.